Okay, so now we're going to discuss for a moment wisdom teeth. For a long time I wondered, I kept wondering, why does everybody have to have their wisdom teeth out? And I, I thought about it chronologically, the ability to remove wisdom teeth hasn't been around that long. And what happened before that? Why, is so, why do so many people have to have their wisdom teeth out? And what, what can we, if, we, if we're looking for a different way of doing it, what is that? And the answer to the question for me turned out to be really simple. You don't have to have your wisdom teeth out. It, it's a, you know, idiot simple. So let me explain. When, when the wisdom teeth are coming in, they're, they're part of the body that, that has been given to us. In, in holistic medicine, we're, we're always suspicious about the idea of extra parts. The, uh, the body, ha we have what we need and that's that's usually correct so to to remove the wisdom teeth just for um, just because is not a good idea we're often told that there's not going to be room and they're not going to fit and perhaps there are times when this is appropriate but my experience has been different what I've seen is that if if we give the body sufficient um, sufficient horsetail really to 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 influence the, the the bones and the teeth themselves the uh, the wisdom teeth will come in with much less uh, drama and there'll be room so what what that means is it's a very simple solution if you have wisdom teeth and wish to keep them remember that your teeth are are very uh, movable movable parts of your body that's why orthodontics works at all you can put braces on them and influence so we can influence them by eating sufficient sufficient amounts of horsetail and then using um, poulticing to to aid the entry of the teeth so the matrix the 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 structure of the jaw will subtly change if it has enough of the proper nutrients or, or building constituents that, that it needs in order to allow those teeth to fit. Um, we had huge, huge amounts of experience now with people just deciding, okay, I'm going to actually move on this wisdom tooth, tooth thing a little more slowly. I'm going to eat sufficient amounts of horsetail, and when they start to bother me a bit, I'm going to poultice them, and lots of people get their wisdom teeth in without really any problem and they're grateful to have these uh, these effective and useful teeth so to poultice an incoming wisdom te tooth is is very similar get a piece of, of prickly pear before like we described before put it on the tooth on the uh, on the area that's sore and and uh, it, it'll be very soothing and it'll help draw the tooth in you might have to do this pretty frequently, but be sure that the main ingredient is eating plenty of horsetail. You can use other things. Clay is not so effective, but a plant like plantain leaves, crushed and chewed a little bit, and put over that, that sore area where the tooth is coming in, will re relieve and soothe and help draw the tooth in. Very simple, very simple and effective processes. So you have, a, you have yet more option, and remember, with wisdom teeth, there isn't an instant emergency. It's not as if they have to have something done to them the moment that, um, that they've been decided that there's not enough room. You have, a, you have some time to work with them and go ahead and do that if you like. Um, orthodontics is, is also in the same, uh, same kind of realm where if we give the body what it needs, suddenly there'll be more, um, the, there, it'll be more accommodating for what needs to happen. I've had the experience of, um, different experiences of people coming to me with tooth problems that they felt that, the, that had been described as needing orthodontics, either surgery, tooth removal, braces, those kind of things. And we found that by 
using the horse tail, their, their jaw adjusted to a satisfactory condition and they no longer had the problem. Um, this isn't unusual in alternative or holistic medicine. We often do this kind of therapy where we're giving the body what it needs in order to do what it wants to do. You've been, we've been given the, our body has been given these teeth. They should fit. There's a reason they're not. And for the most part, if we give the proper nutrition, so to speak, with this horsetail, things will change and, the, and within a, a limited time, there, there will be room for those teeth. Um, give that a try. Next, I'd like to talk about gum health. There, there's a few things to, to um, understand about gum health. First is that when someone has um, poor quality gums, and there's, there's, there's slight problems with gums all the way to serious problems with gums, but if someone is experiencing gum problems, which are usually um, receding gums or very sore and very sore bleeding gums these kind of problems this sort of person almost always has very good teeth and if somebody has um, very poor teeth they usually have great gums and this is because it's a it's a it's a pH condition if someone is very alkaline, they will have gum problems. And if they're very, very acidic, they'll have tooth problems. This is important to know um, in general. If you're a person who tends to have continuous tooth problems, there, you, it can be addressed by addressing the acidic, acidic uh, acidness, or the acidity of the body. And that's, that is um, changed through diet easy enough to do. Always remembering that dietary change is intellectually easy to do. We know the things that um, we need to change in our diet, but that making dietary change is always a bit challenging. It, re it requires a lot of emotional adjustment, habitual adjustment, and if we honor the fact that dietary change is difficult in those ways and do it slowly and carefully, we can be successful. If we forget that, it's, that it has these other difficult components, we'll often fail at being able to make lasting change. So continuously bad teeth, one should note that they probably are extra acidic and address that. Someone with bad gums is the opposite. They have a, a alkaline condition that needs to be adjusted as well. So for those of us, for those people who are just um, somewhere with slight gum problems or trying to maintain good gum health and maybe are dealing with some receding gums, there's very powerful things one can do for that. One, using a tooth powder that we've already talked about and described is awesome for gums. The next thing to understand about gum health is that the digestive tract starts right here, not at the end of the mouth. So whatever's reflected, whatever's happening with the digestion is reflected in the mouth and especially visible in the gums. So if there's a, um, a chronic weakness to the gums, there'll be a, a slight digestive weakness as well. And a bitter tonic taken before meals for a while will also help change that alkaline and, um, slight and, and slightly deficient digestive which is reflected in the gums. A bitter tonic is available in all kinds of herb stores. People make really wonderful ones. Um, a bitter tonic that I find to be really effective is a small bit of the bark or the wood of um, this plant which is, is the root of a, of a medicine plant called Mahonia or Oregon grape and this is a well-known and well-used medicinal plant 
um, grows in almost all the forests. It's fairly abundant. Again, we don't want to um, ever harvest any of these plants without doing it in a thoughtful and respectful way. So as a bitter tonic, we'll use a piece of bark, maybe that large, a few minutes before one or two meals of the day. If you, if you set yourself up with a system that is effective, that you don't have to go search around for your root, it's right there, you take a small piece. You take too much, it'll be overstimulating and you won't want to use it anymore. Take a small piece, just enough to create a, a little bit of saliva going in the mouth. This will also aid someone with chronic gum problems because it stimulates the, the, di the uh, deficient digestive problems that affect the gums. The next thing I want to remind people of is that if you decide to go to the dentist and get your tooth teeth cleaned, that's a that's a, a vulnerable time because they they really work your teeth pretty hard to get them clean like they do and that's a very important time to remember to be using lots of horsetail so that you don't later experience cavities and because this is something that I do a lot I, I get to kind of notice patterns and one of the patterns that I've noticed is that people will get their teeth cleaned and three to five months later they'll go back in and they'll have a number of small cavities so if you're choosing to get your teeth clean be sure to eat sufficient amounts of horsetail around the time you're getting them cleaned before and after and be, this will be um, very, this will help you avoid the chance of um, the tooth cleaning having weakened your teeth enough that you're starting to get some cavities.